If you look at my previous videos, you can see a lot of the different insertion points, a lot of the different actions that these things make, but I wanted to kind of show you all on a person. So we're going to go over the four of them. This is right here in green. If you zoom in a little, Brie, uh, uh, sorry, if this, the infraspinatus covers the entire shoulder blade right here. Origin, obviously, on top of the shoulder blade. You're going to have a lot of little mini trigger points. The, it connects right here, actually under the humeral head. I just can't see through skin, but this is right about where it connects. If you need a better image, you can look at Mr. Steve, Sydney, if you can show. Man, don't choke the guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you turn him the other way, oh, you'll okay. see, if Bree is zooming in, right here is the infraspinatus, and then right below connects the teres minor. These, if you practice at home, you can actually hit these trigger points. I won't do it to her again, mm -hmm. but you, you kind of put the thumb over the thumb and push in, and and if it's an active trigger point, hold it you know, for a few seconds, maybe do some pumping action, hold, let go, hold, let go, and it should help release the muscle. Along with, this is the teres minor. It runs right on the bottom edge of the shoulder blade and connects again right under that. Again, some little trigger points right through here and right in here. She was just afraid I was gonna do it that time. <laughs> the infraspinatus, one thing about it that a is important to know is that it is the second most commonly torn rotator cuff muscle and usually that's from pitchers who pitch <clears throat> and st over strength stretch this so the mo action that this one does as i just said it pulls the, mu the muscle back and the pitchers throw it that way and it recoils back sometimes overworking the muscle and causing a tear the f number one muscle that gets torn is actually the supraspinatus and this one runs right up here. It connects right in this part of the neck, um, near the spine, and runs through here. It's kind of like if you imagine that little triangle that happens right here, that's kind of how it runs right through here. Steve can show you again. This is Sydney, by the way. She's our other therapist. Bree is doing our video, so. Right Are you zooming in over there? Mm -hmm. You can see. Okay. So when you're doing these trigger points, you can definitely, you know, same, uh, same way, hit them through here. Usually a little bit more tender right where the triangle meets. This um, motion, the action of this, it connects right here. <clears throat> and I'll show that a little bit more when we go face up. But it connects right here. It can be extremely tender, definitely if they have an impingement. Mm. Check out some of our other videos. I have some frozen shoulder work I do. And I think Sydney might be actually in one of those. <laughs> so it goes, and the reason you don't see it over because it goes under this bone right here and through the acromion process, which is the reason it gets impinged so much. <clears throat> Same, this one pulls the shoulder up. And also it pulls the arm about 30 degrees this way. <clears throat> when they go this way further, it's the deltoid that takes over. And then when it goes over that, that's when the infra infraspinatus gets involved. So, all right, so next we're gonna show you all the subscapularis. All right, now we are at the subscapularis. This one connects right in front of the anterior part of the shoulder right here. Usually it can be pretty tender. It's overworked really hard because our our pec, pecs and scapularis both internally rotate our shoulder. If you want to see it on Steve, it is right here, everyone, right in there. So anytime you extend the arm out and you feel a little pinch in there, that's where it's coming from. All right, so it's main, like I said, main function to pull your shoulder in. <clears throat> what happens a lot is we sit at desk a lot and we rotate our shoulder more because we're right-handed, averagely, yeah. and that causes a lot of tension that builds there. And the way we would fix that is all one active stretching, but more importantly, is actually strengthening the back side of our shoulder. Now, to hit trigger points, in general, you're going to find one right here on the bottom edge of the shoulder blade. Can you feel that a little bit? Breather. Breather. Okay. Breather. 
and Don't then if you go right above that, you'll find the other. Now, I when I do a massage, I try not to really put fingertips because that can be more direct. I usually do a, a forearm and just compress in there. I'm not gonna do it hard to her right now. And sometimes, if they're not releasing, you can have them do the motion or uh, that that specific muscle does. So basically, I would be holding and she would come forward and that would act to release it. As long as, uh, along with, if they push down, it will help open it up as well. It's uh, also the only muscle that as a rotator cuff that's in the front. Now, I did want to go over a little bit with the supraspinatus. So this is the front of it. So here's the acromion process. It runs under that into here. You'll find that you know you're there because you get the little tendon that pops. You feel that? Yes, yeah. yeah, she, she's ju jumping. You know you're on it. One way <laughs> to active release that is you actually come right under here and, and you press in and then have them bring their arm up. Only about 30 degrees. I like doing this on the side. This is again on my frozen shoulder video. It does really good at helping release that muscle. And then anytime you do trigger points or something like that, make sure you wash it out really good. You know, spread the blood flow so it doesn't get too tender. You don't, you know, don't, I don't personally like doing the trigger point therapy where you're holding it for like 30 seconds. I think that's one cruel and it can be done a lot more effectively by, you know, doing more of a pumping, you know, hold it for about seven seconds. Pain level should never go over, I would say seven and one to 10. But if they're tensing up against you, that's good signs too much. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our video and please follow us, you know, subscribe, hit like, and share this with your friends and family. Thanks again to our staff, Sydney, Caitlin, and Bree. Have a great day.